What's going on everybody? Well listen, we're back for another video today. If you saw in my last video where we're breeding rainbow shiners for profit, what you would have noticed is, is in my riverbank aquarium, what we put in there were two of these beautiful golden claw fiddler crab. As I've been watching these things, they're very interesting little creatures. And I, well, I'm gonna try to breed them. Apparently, it has never been done in captivity and I'm probably gonna fail at this horribly. However, we're gonna give it a go. And Max is back here messing with the light bar on the Jeep. What are you doing? So we're gonna go out and head out and pick this stuff up. So we'll see you back here in just a minute. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a mixture of both pool filter sand as well as all purpose sand. We're gonna rinse this out really good and try to get it as clean as possible before we put it in here. I'm now gonna just let this bucket overflow until this water starts to run clear, just simply to get all of the dirt and debris out of this sand. Once that's complete, we'll go ahead and move this into the tub. And while this is washing out, so as a part of this, we're also gonna go ahead and wash off some rock that we're gonna be using as a part of this enclosure as well. We're gonna get as much of this dirt out as possible. Laundry baskets that are perforated like this are actually a really great way to wash bigger substrate. You can find baskets with smaller holes that make it great for washing smaller substrate as well. But I always use a laundry basket to wash my gravel. Now that that's clean, let's start getting this stuff together. So what I want to start with is I'm going to be adding a land mass on this side that will be low enough where the crabs cannot get out of this container. However, it will slope down into a sandy bed over here. So to build this land mass, I want to start with a base level of gravel. So just kind of like this. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually start filling this side over here in with sand. Having this bucket here is not gonna be nearly enough. We're gonna have to wash some more, but this will at least get us started. What I'm really trying to do is go ahead and get this more natural looking by allowing the rocks to kind of fall off into the sand. Cause we want a gradual slope down. So we're gonna go ahead and add some more rock up to this land area here. That'll probably be enough. We just want enough land mass here for them to be able to climb out of the water and have a place to go. Now what I wanna do is I actually wanna backfill this up here with some sand as well, because crabs do in fact like to burrow. So I'm gonna add some sand up here, which will actually naturally wash down into kind of this rock bottom that we have, which is fine, but I still want it to be as natural as I possibly can get it. I'm also gonna add a couple of these larger river stones in here, just to give it a nice little aesthetic. I'm do that on top of a little bed of gravel here, just to give it a uh, little higher stance, because we want that to be an area where the crabs can actually come out of the water as well. So now we're just gonna take the water and we're gonna start washing this stuff down. Kind of let it naturally erode how it wants. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and drain this water to get some of this dirty murkiness out of here and then we'll refill it again. Now that we've drained this, we're actually going to let a very slow stream of water start to fill this up. And this is gonna take some time to fill up, but I want it to be very, very low. I want it to disturb the sand as least amount as possible. And while this is filling up, I'm actually gonna go ahead and add some additional rock up here to this top section. Go ahead and start commenting below. I'm gonna give away another piece of Christopher Scott merch for this video. I will give it away in the next video and I'm just gonna pick a random person within the comments, but in order to enter for your chance to win a piece of Christopher Scott merch, all you have to do is start commenting as many times as you would like in as many different comments as you want. And let me know what type of animals you have at home, what they are, what their names are, and how long you've had them. That would be fantastic. In the next video, I will pick a random comment from this video and I will send you a piece of Christopher Scott merch. So what we're going to be using for filtration on this setup is going to be the ZooMed Turtle Clean 318. Now the reason I'm going with this is because it is a multi-stage filtration system that's made for aquatic and semi-aquatic turtles. Because they're so messy, it does a really good job. It also lays flat, so I'm going to be able to lay this flat in here and it'll do a really good job of actually filtering this up. The other reason is as well, because these things are like $40 
$13 normal price, but right now, if you price match at PetSmart, $13. So run out and get you some if you need them. Now the multi-stage filtration that happens here is you have both mechanical and biological filtration. So it actually comes with some activated carbon as well. And there's enough activated carbon to replace this twice. So it's a really good deal for $13. So we have the entire setup done. We have the filtration going. Now all we need to do is dechlorinate and add some beneficial bacteria to this water, as well as go ahead and add a little bit of aquarium salt. We have this bin completely set up and now the only thing that is left is to go ahead and add some creatures to it. So we're gonna go out, we're gonna pick up about 15 to 20 gold fiddler crabs. So we are back and we have our little creatures for this little tub setup. Now, before we get into that, let's talk about some plants that I picked up. Well, to start, we got some of these really good looking java ferns. Oh, and look at this. Do you see this right here? So on the underside of this leaf, what these are called are java fern spores. And this means that this plant is actually reproducing, which is fantastic. Which means we're gonna have a whole lot of baby java ferns, apparently. Java fern actually uses a process called apomixis, which is basically the asexual reproduction of a plant without fertilization. So basically each one of these little spores will turn into a little clone of this exact plant and then break off the plant until it can attach to something and grow. So we'll keep an eye on these and see uh, how many little java ferns we get out of this. We also picked up some more of these Kleiner bar swords, which if you see this Kleiner bar sword right here in this tank, these things look fantastic once they're grown in an adulthood. These are a little smaller than that one was when we got that one. We also picked up some of this broadleaf Ludwigia, which is a really cool plant. And honestly, depending on how much light you put on this stuff, depends on how red or how green it stays. So another really cool plant. And finally, a cup of Christmas moss. Not really sure what we're gonna do with this yet, but they had it, figured I'd go ahead and pick it up. Well, because it looks cool and I think I've got some ideas for it. Well, it's been over a week since we put this enclosure together with these crabs. And these crabs are doing fantastic in here, actually. And if you look real closely, we got one here, we have one back over here. They've all kind of made their territory. You can kind of see them all in here. There's a big male. There's another big male. I've had no problems with any kind of aggressiveness on the males. You can see some back up under here. They're everywhere. I mean, they are all over the place. But what we're gonna do real quick is we're actually gonna feed these guys. And what these guys love to eat are these API algae wafers. I mean, they go crazy for these things. You can kind of see that guy back there in the back eating. So what's gonna happen is, is these algae wafers are gonna break up into this sand. And these guys are very much sand sifters, but they really like these things. And sometimes they'll grab them whole. But what I've learned about these crabs is, is that they are very shy eaters and you gotta get them used to you in order to kind of hand feed and take food from you. And we'll get to that point. We're slowly working on it, but they're not quite there yet. Yet. But these guys are doing fantastic. So hopefully you guys like this bin setup for these crabs. They're very, very interesting creatures for sure. And I definitely like them. I think they're really cool and, you know, we're going to keep them around. So at the last count, we have not lost any of them, which is good. They seem to be really hardy. They really like the sunshine. So I have this rock here as a basking rock and then all of this up here as basking area. They spend more time up on the land sections than they do in water. Water. Usually they're rushing to the water when I kind of scare them out. These guys are doing great. The filtration that we're using is doing great and everything looks good. All right. Well, hopefully you guys like this setup for these little fiddler crabs. And I will have to say it's a pretty easy DIY setup and extremely cheap. Now I will tell you, I need to actually remove some of those rocks up in that land area and replace it with more of a dirt substrate or a mud substrate because the fiddler crab actually likes to burrow a couple of inches down into the mud and build tunnels and things of that nature. That is also how they mate. As far as breeding fiddler crabs go, it is a very difficult process from what I'm reading and almost impossible in captivity. The reason is, is because the mating ritual between the crabs is fine and the actual production of eggs is okay as well and that can happen. But the problem is, is that when the female returns to the water to lay her eggs, those eggs actually immediately hatch into a larva and that larva lives inside of the water column of the ocean 
until it reappears on land as a small juvenile crab. That is what makes it so difficult to breed these guys in captivity and why it's almost never done or you never see it successful. So my chances of getting these guys to breed is slim to zero to none, but they're still super cool creatures that I plan on keeping for a long time. So I'm gonna go ahead and redo that rock section of this tub, and you'll see that in a later video once it's completed. With all of that, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching me set this up. And like I said in the beginning of the video, I am going to be giving away another piece of Christopher Scott merch, such as the Arowana t-shirt that I have on today. So all you have to do is make sure you comment below. The more times you comment, the better your chances of winning. What I'd like to know is, what are the pets you have at home? What are their names? How long have you had them? Things, just basic things like that. If you wanna just leave what type of animal it is in the name, that's okay too. And you will get your choice of either a arowana or angelfish t-shirt at thefanaticbrand.com. So make sure you enter. So with all that guys, I really appreciate you guys watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. We are standing currently in another room in my house that you have never seen. And this room is actually soon to become the fish room. Big things coming. We're expanding the fish room. So make sure you stay tuned and make sure you subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss the content coming up as well as make sure you follow us on Instagram as well as Facebook. You can find links to all of that below in the description of this video. But with all that guys, thank you so very much. I'm truly grateful for each and every one of you and hey, we will see you next time.